Hey guys, my name is Scoby and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to play PlayStation 2 games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. This is going to be a nice, quick and easy tutorial. I'm going to be showing you step by step how to do everything. Let's jump right into this. So I will mention before we get too far into today's video, for this to work, you're already going to need to have both dev mode and retro arch already installed on your Xbox Series S and your Xbox Series X. For this method, we're going to be using the most up-to-date version of retro arch as the time of recording, which is 1.9.4. I'll bring you a card on screen to my previous video where I show you how to set up and install retro arch. For anyone that's been following my previous videos and hasn't seen the most up-to-date version, I do plan to bring a full update guide on how to update your current install of retro arch to the new one. However, it hasn't come out yet, but you can feel to follow that other one you might just need to make sure you have a backup of all your save files first from this point there's a couple things we need to set up and do before we can fully bring everything over to our xbox the first thing we're going to be doing is installing a file browser over on our xbox so we can actually transfer over files and games a little bit later on so that's the first thing we're going to be doing from this point we're going to need to load up our xbox series x and we're going to need to know the ip address for the remote access on the bottom right this is what we had to use to install retroarch previously but we're going to need to locate back to this website again to bring over some extra files that we're going to need to play playstation 1 games from this point we're going to be opening up our web browser and we're going to be locating to the url that we had set previously from our xbox i have just logged in and i'm right here right now so for us to bring our bios file to retroarch it is technically possible to do it from the web portal however i've always had a lot of issues with that so i would recommend doing it through a file browser instead so what we're going to be doing is installing a file browser on our xbox through the web portal so we can actually transfer our bios files via the usb over to our xbox directly so what we're going to be doing to do this is come to this link as always links is in the description down below and what we're going to be doing is downloading a file explorer application that we're going to be installing on our xbox dev portal so come to this link simply click download and then your download will begin once your download is done we're going to be coming back to our xbox dev portal we're going to be coming to the my games and apps on the home section right here we're then going to be selecting the add button here and we're going to be choosing our my explorer file.app.x that we just downloaded previously click open select your file select next then select start and then your file will start to install now this can take a couple of seconds before it fully installs and opens up on your xbox and just like that the file should be installed from this point we're going to be talking about games and i will mention i'm not going to be sharing any download links or showing you where to download games they're easy to find if you want to download them you can feel free to search on google otherwise you can feel free to create a dump or backup of any existing ps2 games you have again i'm not going to be showing you that in today's video but a quick google search will help you out so if you're like me and you've downloaded your games most of your games will most likely come in a dot 7 z or dot rare format like all i have right here now sadly we can't load these directly in retroarch so we're first going to have to extract them to extract them you can't do this directly in windows you are going to need a second tool called WinRare or 7-Zip. Again, I'll be leaving both of these linked in the description down below. For today's video, I'm going to be using 7-Zip and we're going to need to extract these files out. So what I'm going to be doing is just extracting one of our files. All we need to do is left click to select it. We're going to be hovering over 7-Zip and we're going to be extracting files. Or you can click extract here if you want to do it in the same location. For me, I'm just going to be extracting here. And then our game is going to start to extract out. Now, depending on the game and depending on the computer you're using, this can take a couple of minutes. So you might have to be patient here while this extracts and then it'll come out into the correct file. So once your game is extracted, it will most likely come out in a .iso format. And that's exactly what we're looking for in RetroArch we're looking for a .iso format game. From this point, I will also mention that some games will have difficulty running from your external drive or from a USB stick. So it is recommended to actually move them to your internal storage to have less problems with this. Now, in my previous RetroArch install video, I did show you how to expand the dev mode file storage so we can easily transfer games over. So that is something you might want to do. Now, of course, you can always try to run games from a USB stick. Me personally, I never had any luck doing this method. So I'm always going to be transferring my files over. We're going to be doing this with my files explorer a little bit later on. So that's something to keep in mind. And I'm going to be transferring these games over there a little bit later on. From this point, the next thing we're going to need to download is some extra files that we're going to be needing for our emulator over on RetroArch. To do this, what we're going to be doing is coming to this link. Links is always in the description down below. And this is for the PCSX2 websites. What we're going to be doing is coming here and we're going to be downloading this application. We're going to be taking some files for it and then we're going to be bringing it over to our Xbox. So what we're going to be doing is coming to this link. We're going to be coming here to the center and we're going to be coming to the development side and we're going to be clicking on windows once this opens up what we're going to be doing is downloading the latest development version to do this what we do is come here we simply come to the latest version we click download here on the right we left click this we will then be brought to this screen and then we're going to be again simply downloading the latest version here which is right here simply left click this and then our file is going to start to download 
From this point again, our file is going to be in a .7-zip format, so we're first going to need to extract this. Again, simply right-click, hover over 7-zip like I'm doing in today's video, extract here, and then our files are going to extract out. From this point, we're going to be double-clicking inside this folder. We're then going to be looking for the pcsx2.exe file that you have right here. We're going to be double-clicking to run this. We're simply going to start this up. We're then just going to be clicking next. We're then going to be clicking next. And we're basically going to wait until PCSX2 generates all these extra files and assets. And you're looking for all of these extra folders. And we can continue here just until it asks for a BIOS file. From this point, once we have generated all of these files, we can simply click cancel. And just like that, we have generated all the necessary files from PCSX. Now, from this point, there is one extra thing we also need to do here. There is a folder here called BIOS. And for our PS2 emulator, we also need a BIOS file for PS2. So if we double click inside here, we can see it's currently empty. So what we need to do is get a PS2 BIOS to put in here. Again, I'm not going to be sharing any download links to this. You can feel free to go on Google if you want to try find one like that. Otherwise, you can feel free to create a backup or dump of your existing PS2 BIOS. You can dump that really easily. I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video, although you can feel free to do some Google searching for that. It will definitely point you in the right direction. Once you have found your PS2 BIOS files, all you need to do is paste them into this folder here. And we're going to be taking all of this folder, this PCSX2 folder here, and we're going to be bringing it over to RetroArch a little bit later on. So you need to make sure you have all this content ready. We're going to be transferring all of this over to our external drive. We're also going to be bringing all of our games over to our external drive. And then we're going to be continuing discussing everything from our Xbox. The last thing you need to do with this folder before we can go over to our Xbox is just rename it. We're going to be renaming it to just PCSX2. So you can just remove everything from this point, click delete, click enter, and then you will have a PCSX2 folder with all of your content inside. And that's what we're going to bring over to RetroArch and our Xbox. So once you're over on your Xbox and you've plugged in your drive, if this is your first time plugging in your drive, you might get this pop-up asking if you'd like to use it for Xbox game storage or media storage. It's really important here that you select media storage so we can add whatever files we want on here. Otherwise, Otherwise, if you select game storage, it will fully wipe your drive and only allow you to install Xbox games on this. So it's important that you make sure this is entered correctly. So from this point, we're over on our Xbox. The first thing we're going to be doing is launching My Files Explorer, and we're going to be copying the necessary BIOS files from our external drive over to our Xbox. So once My Files Explorer launches, the first thing we're going to be doing is locating here to remove all storage devices. We're going to be clicking A on this. We can use our left thumbstick to move around. Once we're here, we're going to be locating to whatever external drive your files are on. So for me, they're on my E drive. They're currently in my Xbox folder, in my BIOS folder, and I currently have my PCSX2 folder right here. To copy this, we need to click the Start button. We're going to be hovering over Copy Folder, and our folder is going to be copied. From this point, we need to locate to our RetroArch folder. To do this, we can come here to the left underneath this device. We're going to be looking for the isolated storage. We're going to be clicking the A button to open this up. Here, we'll get a blank screen because we're currently inside the My Files Explorer folder. To get out of this, we need to come up to the URL bar here. We're going to be clicking on Packages. We're then going to be looking for the folder named 1E4C. This is our RetroArch folder. We need to click A to open this up. We're then going to be looking for the local state folder right here. And once this opens up, we're going to need to scroll down a little bit. To scroll down, you can use your right thumbstick and simply point it down. We're going to be looking for the system folder right here. And here is where we're going to need to paste our BIOS file. You can see I have my BIOS files for all my other systems right here as well. To paste it in here, all we need to do is click the start button. We're going to be clicking paste and our files are going to be transferred across. Now this can take a couple of seconds to transfer everything across. So you just need to be patient here and now our files are transferred across. From this point, we're now going to be talking about how to transfer over games and where I'd recommend putting your games. For me, where I'd recommend putting your games is inside your RetroArch folder. So what I'm going to be doing is coming up here to the 1E4C folder. You can just click on it here and it'll be brought up to the top folder in our RetroArch. From this point, I would then recommend going inside the local state folder. And what we're going to be doing here is creating a new folder called games. To do this, we need to hover to a blank space. What I have is right here. We're going to be clicking the start button. We're going to be creating a new folder. And here, I'm just going to be naming it games, although you can name it whatever you want. So now I've created a new folder here called games. Now, one thing that can be useful when trying to locate your games is changing from a grid to a list view. To do this, we can come up here to the top right on the three dots. And here you can change between grid and list view if you want to expand out the file name so you can see that you're copying the correct file. And all we need to do from this point is locate back to our removable storage. So for me, mine is right here. We're then going to have to locate to where your games are. So I currently have my FIFA street.iso file right here. What I'm going to be doing is clicking the start button again. I'm going to be clicking copy file and then we simply bring it back to our games folder. Once you're here, simply click start again. We're going to be clicking paste and this can take a lot longer. PS2 games can be quite big in size up to about four and a half gigabytes. So it can take a little bit of time to transfer this file over. What we're going to be doing is backing out of my files explorer and then we're going to be launching RetroArch. 
Once you're over on RetroArch, there's a couple things we're going to have to do to be fully set up for our PS2 core. Because our PS2 core uses some slightly different settings than our normal cores, we're going to have to change a couple things. So the first you're going to be doing is creating a new configuration file. So this we can come here to the home screen, come down to configuration file, and we're simply going to be clicking save new configuration, which is basically going to create a new configuration file. We're then going to be loading this new configuration file by coming up here to the top, clicking load config. And here we can see our recently made configuration file that we just created right now. Click A to select this. RetroArch will go black for a second and then it will load back up. From this point, you can click the B button to get back out. And here we're back to our main menu. We're going to be coming to settings. We're going to be coming to drivers. We're then going to be coming down to the video driver. And we're going to be selecting here D3D11. We basically need to have DirectX 11 set up here. So what we're going to be doing is selecting this. The second thing we're going to be doing is coming back out of here. We're going to be coming to the video tab. We're going to be coming to full screen mode. And then what we need to do is make sure forced resolution on UWP is enabled here. This will basically make sure that our on-screen controls fully show up here. So we need to make sure we have this enabled just for this config. From this point, we can back out of here. We're then gonna be coming back to our main menu. We're gonna be coming to our configuration file. We're gonna be clicking save current config. Our configuration is gonna be saved. Clicking the B button to back out of here. We're gonna be coming back to our main menu. Now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be loading our core. So we're gonna be coming here to the main menu, click load core click A, and we're going to be scrolling down until we see Sony. And here we're looking for Sony dash PlayStation 2 and PCSX2 in brackets. We need to come here, click the A button. Our core is then going to be loaded up. From this point, we're going to be staying on the main menu right here. But this time we're going to be scrolling down until we see load content. We're going to be clicking the A button to open this up. And here we're going to have to locate to where our games are. So if you are running them from your external drive, they will most likely come up on your E drive. But as mentioned, this can give a lot of issues and it's not something I'd recommend. From this point, we're going to be coming down and we're going to be looking for the Q folder right here. And this is going to be basically bringing us directly into our local state folder where we created our games folder before. We're going to be clicking A on this. We're then going to be scrolling down until we see games. And here we should see the game that we transferred over previously. So for me, it's FIFA Street. What I'm going to do is clicking A to open this up. Again, if you have multiple cores that can read the .iso formats, they will show up other cores here as well. However, our currently selected core here, the very top one, is our PCSX2 core. We're simply going to be clicking A on this. Our screen is then going to go black for a couple of seconds, and we just need to wait for our PlayStation 2 to load. And just like that, you can see we're playing PlayStation 2 games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. For me, this is super surreal, and just like that, they actually work really well. Now, again, to mention, this is still in really early development for the PS2 on RetroArch on the Xbox. So don't expect everything to run perfectly. And in fact, expect a lot of bugs and a lot of issues depending on the games you're playing. From this point, what I'm going to be doing is talking about some of the settings and some of the core specific options we can go through. What we need to do is open up our RetroArch menu. You can use your combination that we set up previously. For me, it's down and select and this is going to open up our RetroArch menu. Here we can see all of our default RetroArch settings. However, we scroll down here to the Options tab, we can open this up, and here we'll get some core-specific options. The first thing we have right here is the BIOS file, and here you can choose and select which BIOS file you want to run. By default, it should automatically select the BIOS, but if you have multiple BIOS files from different regions or different types, you can come in here and select the different BIOS files that you want. We then have Fast Boot. This will basically remove the PlayStation 2 logo at the very beginning when you launch a game. For me, I don't see why anyone would want to remove this i really like it so i wouldn't recommend taking this away we then have our render again i'd recommend leaving this on automatic i wouldn't really recommend touching this we then have our internal resolution we have native playstation 2 and we can scale all the way up until 8k so if you want to run it in 5k resolution this is something you can experiment with but by default i'd recommend at least for the moment leaving it on native ps2 results can vary widely depending on the game you're playing and what you can do here some games you can go quite high up all the way up to 2 to 4x and some games you can barely run at native PS2. So I'd recommend experimenting with this depending on the game you're playing. Although for the most part, I'd recommend leaving it on native for the moment just to be safe. You can then force widescreen. So by default, it will run on 4x3, but you can feel free to enable this. This will require a content restart. So keep that in mind. If you enable this, you can do it. You can set up some antiscopic filtering. I don't really recommend playing with this too much at the moment as well, at least why it's in such early development. But you can feel free to come in here and do it all the way up to 16x. Again, you can experiment with this and see how it runs on game by game. You can enable speed hacks. Again, not something I really recommend, although you can turn that on. It will basically help with some loading of some games. You can also have your frame skip on and off and your couple of extra frame skip settings here as well. Again, you can feel free to experiment with this if you would like. And then finally, at the bottom, you have a couple of video related hacks here. These are very specific to each game. So for the most part, I wouldn't recommend playing with these. What I'll be doing is I'll leave a link in the description down below where we get a guide on specifically where PCSX tells us which games relate to which of these video hacks. So you can feel free to read that and then see which games these relate to specifically. And they are all the different different options and different extra settings we get with our cores. Once you're happy with anything here, you can come up to the manage core settings, you can save game options, and then if you need to, you can feel free to restart your game or close down and relaunch RetroArch if you need to as well to get all these settings to come into an effect. 
The last thing I'd recommend doing is creating a game playlist. You can see I have one on screen right now for my PlayStation. It basically concatenates all of your games into one section so you can really easily select them. You can automatically attach some settings to them. It saves a lot more time than manually locating to them each time. I'm not going to be showing you that in today's video, although I'll be leaving a card on screen to my previous video where I show you step by step how to do that. And that's definitely something I'd recommend doing. And if you want to support the channel, feel free to click the join button. You can become a member of the channel for as little as one euro. It'll really help out the channel and push more videos in the future. You can click the join button right underneath any video on the channel to join the channel. And it's really easy to do. Anyway, guys, it's as easy as that to play PlayStation 2 games on your Xbox Series S or your Xbox Series X. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. I'm going to be leaving a link down below to my PayPal if you found these videos helpful and you want to support me. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always. Keep it saucy. Peace.